The reporters witness the shuttle crash in the desert. It's a UFO. No, no, no. It's the shuttle. Whoa! You can't go in there. No, you don't understand. They're saying it burned on re-entry. They're saying it burned up. Let's go! The group climbs over the fenced area and inspects the shuttle. I don't understand. I thought you said that it burned up. That's what they want us to think. We gotta check this out. Despite the danger, the journalists explore the spacecraft and find astronauts. Oh my god! What the hell happened here? Oh. Dude is jacked up. The group realizes something horrifying. Those wounds don't look like they're from this crash. Whatever they're from, they look painful. The female reporter hopes to find survivors. Look at all this damage. Nobody could have survived. But something unexpected happens. In fear, the journalist backs away from the mutated astronaut and tries to examine him. Dude's alive! Military personnel and special forces arrive at the crash site. The journalist warns her friends that they need to leave. Shit! We gotta get out of here. Wait! Slick! Hey! The journalists hide in a secluded place and observe the military, who want to remove the shuttle's traces discreetly. Rice, Phillips, secure the area. Yes, sir. Everybody else, pop this bird open, clear her out. You to follow the instructions of our guest to the letter. Am I clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Meanwhile, a spider lays its eggs inside the body of the surviving astronaut. Soon, the journalists witness military doctors attending to the injured person. Bring it out, that guy. Good, he's getting some help. Instead, a special forces officer interrogates the unfortunate astronaut. What happened to mother-in-law? Can you hear me? Talk to me! What happened up there? Can you hear me? Who's mother-in-law? The doctor wants to send the astronaut to the hospital, but the special forces officer objects. He's not going anywhere, Doc. This man needs medical attention. He's got extreme edema, massive internal hemorrhaging. We've got the pathology lab. What the fuck is wrong with you? This man is going to the hospital. The journalists realize they have become witnesses to a terrible secret. A few days earlier, scientists in a lab injected a common tarantula spider with a dangerous vaccine. The animal and its astronauts were launched into space on the shuttle Solaris. All this is happening as part of a secret experiment. People have no idea yet what catastrophic consequences await them. How much longer, Solaris? We've got more important fish to fry. Meanwhile, a dreamy journalist named Marcy is late for work. Two visitors who identify themselves as aliens from Alpha Centauri are already waiting for her in the office. Even though they look like regular people, they've been sent in by a light beam. I don't feel right here. I, I just want to go home. Marcy doesn't know how to help them, but she wants to understand who sent them to Earth and why. The girl has long been interested in aliens and learns about a secret Zone 21 in the desert. No civilian planes are allowed to fly over it, and this raises suspicions. This is where the aliens might have landed. With the help of her friends, Marcy obtains a photo of Area 21 and shows it to the aliens. Their reaction amazes everyone. Oh, there's no. Oh, oh there's no. <laughs> Marcy decides to urgently introduce the aliens to their editor-in-chief, named Phil. Although their newspaper publishes articles about space, Phil doesn't like the idea of interviewing aliens. He thinks the strangers are liars and kicks them out. Instead, Phil tells Marcy to write an article about the shuttle Solaris, which recently launched into space. That's not hard news. Marcy, this conversation's officially over. But Marcy doesn't give up. Together with her colleagues Jake and Slick, she sets out to find Area 21. The girl finds the subject much more interesting than the shuttle's journey. In addition, the aliens have identified the zone as their landing site. But Marcy has no idea yet what role the shuttle will play in the alien story. Meanwhile, the flight of the shuttle Solaris continues. The NASA base communicates with the astronauts. The scientists on board take a spider out of its container and inject it with a secret drug. Suddenly something goes wrong. Something terrible happens on the shuttle. All systems go out. The astronauts are screaming and worried for their lives. The base thinks there is a radiation leak on the ship, but they are so wrong. The astronaut's health is deteriorating. The pilot's face is already beginning to swell. He begs the base to allow the shuttle to make an emergency landing. CIA agent Gray, who oversees the flight, reluctantly allows the landing. He's not worried about the people, but about the secret project named Mother-in-Law that was being conducted on board. No one must find out about it on Earth. 
By nightfall, the group of journalists arrives at Area 21 in the middle of the desert. Marcy examines the area through binoculars. Marcy, what are we doing here? There's nothing out here. That's what they want you to believe. The girl believes in conspiracies and often takes her friends to such secret sites. Jake and Slick have long been used to this and only make fun of Marcy. Slick gets tired of sitting in a stakeout and offers to sneak into the area so they prove nothing is there and go home. In the meantime, Marcy gets a call from her supervisor telling her that the shuttle Solaris burned up on landing. Phil is outraged that his subordinate knows nothing about it, even though she was assigned to write an article about the shuttle. Now Marcy is interested in the shuttle news, but the angry boss has already reassigned the article to another journalist. Marcy is upset, but at that moment, the Solaris lands next to the group in Area 21. It hasn't burned up, as the official news reports claim. Marcy is alarmed. She decides to investigate on her own and climbs the fence. The guys reluctantly follow her. Through a hole in the hull, the journalists climb inside the shuttle. Everything is broken, and something terrible has obviously happened. There are astronauts lying all over the place, beyond help. They could not have been injured in the fall. Also, there is a spider crawling around the shuttle, but they don't notice it. Marcy walks on and encounters a surviving astronaut. The injured man is barely breathing and begging for help. Military helicopters and CIA vehicles converge on the shuttle landing site. The journalists are frightened and hide behind the shuttle. Then they quietly run over to the back of a military truck. The crew hopes they can get out of the area that way. Meanwhile, the spider crawls up to the astronaut and lays its larva under his skin. The wounded man does not notice it. Two CIA agents Gray and John Murphy examine the shuttle. John accidentally crushes the spider, which pisses off his evil boss Gray. He actually hopes that none of the astronauts survived. The military takes the injured astronauts out and puts them in the back of the truck, where the journalists are hiding. They hide in a far corner and do not show themselves. Medics examine the only survivor. The astronaut can barely speak, but Gray does not care. He angrily interrogates the unfortunate man about what happened to Project Mother-in-Law. What happened to Mother-in-Law? Can you hear me? What happened to Mother-in-Law? Can you hear me? Talk to me! He only breathes heavily in response. The doctor insists that the victim needs immediate medical attention. But Gray has a different opinion. He eliminates the doctor and plans to interrogate the astronaut later. In the meantime, the unfortunate man is sent to the lab. Agent John Murphy strongly dislikes this approach to the case, but he does not dare to cross his boss. Gray blows up the shuttle to cover up all traces of the terrifying secret experiment. The terrified journalists have seen and heard everything, but they can't get out. The truck travels with them to the lab at the base. A freight elevator takes the car deep underground. The military unloads the astronauts without noticing the hiding journalists. Without anyone seeing them, they sneak out of the truck and hide in the corridor. The friends have no idea where to go or how to get out. Even the nosy Marcy gets uncomfortable. Soon the lab workers lower the only surviving astronaut into the underground. It's the guy from the shuttle. We gotta help him. Although Jake and Slick don't like the idea, they follow Marcy. The lads slowly follow the gurney. To avoid being spotted, they hide in the adjoining room. This turns out to be a secret laboratory. The flasks contain strange organs, and one contains the embryo of an alien. The astonished journalists film and photograph the whole thing. It looks like Marcy was right in her speculation. Then the trio make their way into the lab where the surviving astronaut was brought in. He is put on an four to stabilize his condition. The guys take pictures of the man, causing him to regain consciousness. I must stop mother-in-law. The reporters don't know what he's talking about. The astronaut asks them to get away from this horrible place, and then he spits yellow substance and screams. Suddenly, a giant spider comes out of his mouth. Alarmed lab technicians arrive at the noise. The spider wraps a web around one of them and tries to disembowel the other. Then the monster runs out into the hallway. The journalists also run away and hide in a room with strange flasks. Soon the spider gets to them as well. It attacks the door viciously, wanting reprisal, but the trio manage to escape through another exit. In a panic, they run down the corridor and try to find an elevator to get out of the dungeon. Jake is good at navigating the space and promises to lead his friends out. Meanwhile, one of the lab techs presses the alarm button with the last of his strength. The CIA agents, along with the military, hear the signal and immediately head into the underground lab. In an attempt to get out, the journalists find themselves in a cryo room. There are many pods in which astronauts are frozen for a mission that is yet to take place. This is so creepy. It's like a bad sci-fi movie. The fellows have no idea yet what terrifying experiments astronauts are being trained for here. The reporters are afraid they won't get out of here alive. The CIA and the military go into the lab to see the astronaut from whom the spider has come out. Agent Gray strictly orders that the monster be caught and brought to him alive. The military commander is worried about the soldier's safety, but once again Gray doesn't care about people's lives. Meanwhile, the reporters pass through a room with cocoons hanging from the ceiling. 
They contain people entangled in spider webs. The friends stumble upon an open cocoon and run away in terror. They reach the stairs and notice a huge spider web at the top. The reporters realize that the spider is sitting on it, but they hope to slip past unnoticed. Suddenly the spider jumps right out at Jake. The guy tries to fight back and almost falls down the stairs. At the last moment, the friends grab Jake's legs. The spider manages to bite him and runs away. After that, the monster undergoes another mutation. Now he is even more dangerous. But the journalists are unaware of this and are resting in the hallway. Suddenly, they notice a room where the mysterious mother-in-law project has begun. There's a pile of spider flasks and formulas for deriving the dangerous vaccine. I think it's safe to say, this is where it all began. Jake hacks into the computer to get more information. And Marcy finds a photo of the alien who came to her office this morning. There is clearly a connection between this place and the aliens. But the guys have no idea what it is yet. Jake discovers that this lab has been experimenting on spiders that lay eggs in living flesh. And on the shuttle Solaris, the spider was injected with alien DNA. This had to be done exactly in space to create favorable conditions for the DNA to be implanted. The guys also learn that the bite of such a spider is 100% destructive to humans. Jake immediately becomes uncomfortable because the monster has recently bitten him. The guy starts to panic and says farewell to life. Fuck you guys, fuck this place, and fuck that fucking spider! As a last act, however, Jake decides to rendezvous with the spider and goes in search of him. He runs down the corridor screaming and suddenly starts mutating. Soon the spider pounces on him. His friends can't do anything to help him. Slick tries to calm Marcy down and convinces her to keep looking for a way out. Finally, they get to the elevator and start going up. But the elevator gets stuck between floors and won't go any further without a special pass. The friends get out through the top grate and climb further up the stairs. The elevator rides up past them. The two open the nearest door, behind which the spider is already lurking. Terrified, they jump off and fall down the shaft. Luckily, a net of cobwebs appears at the bottom. But the spider quickly descends to them. I'm stuck! I'm stuck! Marcy manages to get her sweatshirt off and gets to her feet. She tries to unglue Slick, but to no avail. And the spider keeps getting closer. Slick yells at Marcy to run away. The monster comes down and attacks the guy. In hysterics, the girl jumps onto the stairs and quickly climbs up while the spider deals with Slick. When the girl gets to the top floor, the spider tries to chase her, but the door is shut just in time. Now Marcy is left alone. She sobs and curls up in a corner. The last words of her friends run through her head. This gives the girl strength, and she decides to fight on. Meanwhile, the military is inspecting the tunnels. Some of them have already fallen victim to the spider. Agent John Murphy also rummages through the subterranean floor and hears a suspicious noise. But it's not the spider making it, it's Marcy. He spots the girl and runs after her. Marcy arms herself with a piece of rebar and attacks John from around the corner. Calm down or I'm not gonna hurt you. But Marcy doesn't believe him and takes the upper hand in the fight. Murphy gets on his knees and swears that he is not a bad guy. However, the girl is too angry and wants revenge. John lives through the revenge attack and runs after the girl again to save her. He eventually manages to disarm Marcy. She tries to break free, causing the young people to fall into a flooded basement. The girl hits John, and he tries to pull her out of the water. Suddenly a spider grabs the guy and drags him somewhere. Marcy cannot remain indifferent and tries to push the monster away with a rebar. She manages to save John, who has not yet been bitten by the spider. The young people run through the corridors in search of a way out. In one of the basements, Agent Gray catches up with them. He recognizes Marcy. She's a reporter for a small-time college newspaper. They actually print her paranoid ravings occasionally. All of Marcy's suspicions are justified. Now Gray is going to take her out, so the world won't find out the truth. John is determined to stop him. He protects the girl but cannot shoot the villain. Oddly enough, the spider comes to the hero's rescue. He wraps a web around Gray, traps him in a corner and lays a larva in him. John and Marcy manage to escape. They end up back in the basement with the cocoons, where the spider drags its victims. Marcy finds her friends in the web, who can no longer be saved. Meanwhile, John finds a car that will help them use the elevator. When the two heroes reach the elevator, the spider spots them and tries to break down the door. The elevator starts to go up, but the monster clings to the bottom of the cabin and tries to punch through it with its tentacles. The spider is about to reach the couple, and John, as luck would have it, drops his gun. Then the guy quickly lowers the elevator down. The cabin crushes the monster to the bottom of the shaft, and the two make it safely to the top. But that's not the end of their mission. I'm not slowing down so the world knows what's going on in there. I'll drive. The couple make their way to the newspaper's newsroom throughout the day to tell the editor-in-chief urgently about the horrors in Area 21. But Phil, Marcy's boss, has already been visited by Agent Gray. Should the villain now succeed in removing the only witnesses, Project Mother-in-Law can continue. He wants to continue injecting alien DNA into all living things in order to gain power over the world and, with the help of mutants, crush everything in his path. 
His pathological speech is interrupted by convulsions. Agent Grey twitches and soon transforms into a giant spider, much bigger than the one in Area 21. The monster bursts out into the street and massacres everyone in its path. A policeman drives up to the scene, but he can't save the civilians, as the spider takes his life. The streets are in turmoil. People run from the monster in a panic, and no one can stop him. Spider is a killing machine. We've got to stop it. The heroes find the helicopter Gray flew in while he was human. It contains a tactical grenade launcher that can penetrate any armor. John shoots at the spider, but misses. Now the monster heads downtown. The sun is already going down, and spiders hunt best at night. So the two friends get in the helicopter and set out to search for the spider from the air in a hurry. The monster is already causing mayhem in the city, and the police cannot handle it. Thanks to a radio interception, the friends find out where the spider is located, and fly there. No one can overpower the spider from the ground, but the gunfire angers the monster, so he climbs a tall building. The friends need to hurry, because the spider is about to lay eggs and there will be more monsters hatching soon. Damn it! There's no place to land! I'll take the shot! Although Marcy has never used a grenade launcher, she has to learn how to do it now. The girl ties herself to the cockpit of the helicopter with a rope and listens to John's instructions on how to shoot. The spider has already climbed to the top of the building and could attack the helicopter at any moment. The desperate Marcy tries to shoot the monster, but misses. There is only one projectile left. Now it is the girl's responsibility to hit the target precisely. John flies as close to the roof as possible, and the spider tries to catch the helicopter. The jolt causes the girl to fall out of the cockpit and hang from the rope, and the helicopter's tank rapidly runs out of fuel. John starts praying. Finally, Marcy manages to secure herself to the rope. She is ready to shoot. Suck on this, bitch. The projectile goes right into the spider's mouth. There is a powerful explosion. Finally, the spider is finished. The friends scream with joy and are proud of themselves. Marcy wants to land and go write an article about her adventures. Are you afraid of spiders? Share your thoughts in the comments. Like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.